these are the eight common mistakes that you might be making that are costing you paid brand collaborations and how to fix them. Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jalen and I'm a full-time creator, entrepreneur, a wife, and dog mom. You guys, I'm looking at myself on my iPad in my forehead. <laughs> But hey, you know what they say about big foreheads, lots of knowledge up here, which is what we're getting into today. We are gonna be diving into a crucial topic, the mistakes that you might be making in brand partnerships that are costing you flawless, moolah, coins, dinero. Not only are we going to discuss these mistakes, but I'm also gonna provide with you strategies on how to fix them and how to stop leaving money on the table. Whether you're a seasoned influencer or you're just starting out, these tips are going to help you secure and maintain lucrative brand collaborations. But before we get started, make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel so you can get tips like this on the regular. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that it can be recommended to other creators who are also trying to get to a bag. Because everybody eats over here, honey. There is more than enough money to go around in the influencer industry. And lastly, be sure to take notes too, sis, because I'm going to give you specific action items to avoid these mistakes. The first mistake that you might be making in brand partnerships is not giving yourself enough time to shoot the campaign. I honestly feel like this is one of the biggest mistakes you can make because when you're shooting down to the wire like that, it increases your stress level, your anxiety, and it can literally affect the outcome of your video. You know, you want to go into the filming process calm, cool, collected, and confident. So if you're juggling multiple campaigns that are all due at the same time, or you just have like a lot going on in life, ask the brand for more time. Brands appreciate quality content over rushed content, and they also appreciate communication, especially if you feel like you are not going to be able to meet a deadline. Personally, I used to say yes to every deadline. Girl, I would never ask for an extension, but then literally I was like, I cannot operate like this. Like I'm driving myself crazy because <laughs> I'm a one man band, honey. So now I'm quick to let a brand know that a date won't work for me or that I'm working against another tight deadline. And they are so like understanding and flexible. But y'all, I will meet a tight deadline for a fee. For that, <laughs> I'll take a little stress. And when you ask the brand for more time, you can just say something along the lines of, you know, thank you for sharing the timeline with me. I actually have another tight deadline that I'm working against. I'm able to have you the content on Wednesday instead of Monday. Let me know if that works for you. And I think brands also understand that when it comes to a creator's schedule, it's kind of first come first serve. Like, I don't think they would think that you are prioritizing another campaign over them. It's just like, you had this one in the pipeline first. The strategy to avoid this time management mistake, because that's really what it boils down to, is to prioritize your tasks and only agree to realistic deadlines. Communicate with brands early on if you foresee any scheduling conflicts. The second mistake that you might be making in brand partnerships is that you ain't following the brief. And you might wonder why brands have a laundry list of edits when you submit your video. It may come down to not following the brief properly. So make sure you read and reread the brief carefully. I also like to have it alongside me while I'm filming. So I can like easily reference it back and forth. Or what I'll do is I'll take like the main points from the brief I'll put into like my Notion or my notes app and just like quickly be able to reference that while I'm shooting the content. Now, if there's something that you don't understand, definitely ask the brand for clarification because I've seen them say one thing over email and then the brief says something completely different. And I'm like, uh-uh, honey, I need clarification right now so I can shoot this one time and one time only because girl, straight up, my goal is to minimize reshoots as much as possible. And also this probably goes without saying, but when you follow the brief, it actually communicates to the brand that you read the brief. Like, 
that's common sense i know but like the way that i've seen some brands communicate about the brief you know they even set up calls to go over the brief in detail and answer any questions to chat live like i think there are more instances than we think where the brief was not followed in the past and that's why they're kind of being overbearing about it in a way maybe overbearing isn't the right word maybe it's over communicating the details of the brief the strategy to avoid this mistake is to make note of any key points or guidelines in the brief and keep it accessible while you shoot the content. You can even have a checklist so that you make sure you cover all of the items that the brand is looking for. Mistake number three, you are not spending enough time brainstorming your concept. The creative process takes time and it's different for everyone, so don't feel like you have to rush into the first idea that comes in your head or like you have to go with like whatever you know video inspo that the brand sends you really spend some time brainstorming and researching some ideas that still align with the brand's guidelines I love looking for inspiration on the brand's Instagram or TikTok. I like looking on Pinterest. I like looking at other work that creators have produced. I like to look at relevant hashtags. So I think it'll be helpful if I share my creative process. <laughs> After thoroughly reviewing the brief, I'll see if like anything kind of just pops into my head based on what the brand is looking for. I will also take a look at, you know, any inspiration on the sites that I just mentioned. I'll review any examples that the brand sent. And then by that point, I typically have a good idea of how I want the content to look. So once I kind of settle on a concept, I will then think about where I want to shoot it, if it's going to be home and if it is at home you know is it in my bathroom is it in my office is it in my bedroom or if I want to shoot like on location somewhere like you know is this gonna be downtown is it gonna be at the mall is it like you know wherever it's gonna be at and then I decide on my overall theme which kind of acts as like the title for my video and then all that's left is to create the shot list and for that I just envision how I want the final video to look and then I just write down what shots would be needed to capture that look. I'll also go ahead and write a script in advance if I need one for that campaign. I just think it's so helpful to go into filming already kind of knowing what I'm gonna say and then I can frame the shots to fit the script. Cause I feel like when you shoot first without having the script nailed down, then you might end up missing some shots that could have looked really good with what you were saying in the script. And then sometimes it's just like harder to think of stuff like in the moment while you're filming. Girl, I like to be prepared as best as I can. Also, doing all this stuff in advance is such a time saver. Like the creative process from start to finish is already so long. So it's like, if you can save yourself time, do it. The strategy to fix this mistake is to hold a brainstorming session where you can jot down multiple ideas and then refine them by thinking about what is going to resonate most with your audience and then what is also going to fit the brand's objectives. Mistake number four, and do not take this the wrong way, girl, okay? Because I'm just being honest, but you are not putting your personality in your content. And I do not mean that you need to be loud and extra, like, no. Still be true to yourself, but you need to find a balance between looking organic and your video looking like an ad. The mistake that I see a lot of creators make who don't lean into their personality when they film is that they end up just rattling off product benefits, key messaging points, talking points, and then it just sounds like an ad. Trust me, I have seen briefs where there are 50 key messaging points listed, but that does not mean that you have to talk about every single one of them. And it just doesn't make sense to cram all of that into one video. It's better to like pick one or two things, maybe even three things that resonate with you the most. And even though brands are providing you with that guidance, like here are all the product benefits and key messaging points, it's up to you to incorporate it in a way that feels organic and natural. It's really important to focus on the points that resonate with you and your personal experience the most, because that's what's gonna be like most engaging to an audience and that's what's gonna feel most authentic. For the most part, brands are not looking for creators who sound like they're just reading off of a script. Consumers are so much more savvy nowadays, girl, they can spot an ad from a mile away. So you really have to be intentional with being yourself until it just 
comes naturally. In my opinion, some of the best ads that you watch are the ones where you didn't even realize it was an ad. The strategy to fix this mistake is to inject your personality and your unique style into your content. Even my shy girls, my introverts, y'all also have your own unique style. Storytelling and personal anecdotes are great ways to incorporate you into your content. And this is the type of authenticity that builds trust with your audience. The fifth mistake that you might be making in brand partnerships is that you are afraid to push back on the brand. And pushing back on the brand basically means that you are standing up for yourself and advocating for what you want. At the end of the day, you know your audience best, you know what performs well and what doesn't, and you know your own content style. Girl, you're the subject matter expert. That's why the brand hired you. So don't be afraid to voice your concerns if the brand wants something that doesn't really align with your experience or your content style. I recently had a partnership where a brand wanted me to call out a specific product benefit, but it wasn't a product benefit that I had a concern for. Obviously, I only felt comfortable speaking about the product benefits that treated my specific concerns. And I had to let the brand know that. I was like, hey, like, I don't have this issue, so I don't feel comfortable speaking about it to my audience. It, my audience freaking knows me. Like, y'all know the issues I have and what I don't have. <laughs> so it's like, I can't speak to having this issue and how you know this is a, a big product benefit and I don't I don't have that issue I don't I I trust that the product would treat that issue but like I can't speak to that directly and you guys know what it was not the end of the world the brand was like okay we totally understand so don't be afraid to push back on them if you need to I promise they will respect your decision and appreciate you voicing your concerns the strategy to correct this mistake is to communicate your concerns respectfully and provide reasoning for your suggestions. This establishes you as a knowledgeable and trustworthy partner. Brands are hiring you for your expertise, so if you have a specific opinion on a matter, voice it. The sixth mistake that you might be making is that you are not negotiating your rate. You're not negotiating the contract terms, the deliverables, the usage, not a Y'all knew this was coming though, right? Because I do not play about negotiating. It is key in any brand partnership. There's no world in which you should accept the first rate a brand offers, unless it's non-negotiable, but that is literally the premise of negotiating. You have to ask for something that you want. Counter offering is a standard practice. Brands know this, they're used to it, they negotiate all the time. When you accept the first offer that comes your way, it undervalues your worth and it limits the potential compensation of the partnership. In other words, girl, you're leaving money on the table and we ain't doing that, babe. Now, negotiating can be scary. Maybe you are afraid the brand will walk away if you don't accept their rate. Maybe you don't understand some of the contract terminology, so you don't even know what to ask for. Or maybe you're just not confident in negotiating. But as cliche as it sounds, practice makes perfect. Start by asking for a higher rate, still a number that you're comfortable with, you just have to ask because the worst they can say is no. And there are so many things that you can negotiate in a brand partnership, you guys. It is not just about getting a higher rate. It's about getting terms that work in your favor. The strategy to fix this mistake is to download my negotiating guide, which is linked in the description box below. It'll give you guys detailed tips on how to negotiate effectively. The seventh mistake that you're making is that you are not using the product long enough to create authentic content with it. Girl, we know the first time you used that product was when you filmed the video. We know. I, look, I don't mean to call y'all out, but somebody's got to say it. Obviously, it's different if you are filming a first impression video or an unboxing, but generally speaking, when you're promoting a product, it is crucial that you take the time to use it and really understand the product benefits. This allows you to speak authentically and passionately about the product, which is way more engaging and compelling than simply listing off the benefits. We want to hear your story with the product. What was your experience using it? And now this really does depend on the product because some products, you know, you don't need a full two weeks or a month to reap the benefits before using it. You know, some of them have like instant benefits. Like if it's 
a primer or a setting spray or lip gloss, you know, like you can see the benefits when you apply it. But for skincare products, skincare devices, body products, those might take a little bit more time to see the results. And it's okay to let the brand know that, you know, sometimes they will go ahead and give you, you know, a full two weeks to try out a product, but sometimes they send you the product on Thursday and they want the content by Monday. So you, you really have to be communicative with the brand and let them know like, hey, I understand this is the deadline, but I'd love to have, you know, another week or so, week and a half, two weeks to try out the product and really reap the benefits of it to share the best experience I can with my audience. The strategy to correct this mistake is to integrate the product into your daily routine well before the campaign is due if possible. This gives you ample time to experience the product, see the results and even document results because those are like great testimonials that audiences are looking for and that brands are looking for as well. The eighth and final mistake that you might be making is that you're not following up with brands after the partnership is over. Girl, the partnership does not have to be a one and done deal. A lot of brands are looking for long-term partners. You know, they want creators that they can establish relationships with. And honestly, between me and you, the multi-month or year-long campaigns is where the money's at because those are typically higher paying partnerships. What I like to do after the campaign is complete is screenshot the analytics from my content and send that over to the brand. I will also screenshot any comments that stood out, any DMs that I received about the content or about the product itself, because that's really good feedback for the brand. And it also shows the brand that your audience is genuinely interested in their product. Even if it's just like one or two comments, it could be somebody saying, oh, I use this product as well and I saw amazing results. Or someone might say, oh my gosh, I just bought this because I saw your content, can't wait to use it. Girl, this is amazing <laughs> if you have any evidence of conversions gold that is gold i would say high performing content and conversions are probably two of the best results that you can have from a campaign those are really the meat and potatoes of what a brand is looking for and what they're considering if they want to partner with you again and what i like to do as well is kind of pitch myself at the end of the partnership like if i know that i want to work with a brand again i don't need to wait a month or two months later to go back to the brand and say hey i'm interested in working with you again uh -uh. girl i'm gonna say it right then and there so in that email when i send my analytics i'm also probably sending my invoice at that time as well I'm going to let the brand know how much I enjoyed working on the partnership. And I'm going to ask them if there are any other upcoming campaigns that I can work on. I'll ask if the brand is looking for long-term partners. Let's discuss if that's a possibility. Girl, you got to put yourself out there. And you guys know, like I say this all the time, you have to ask for what you want. Be specific and don't be afraid to be forward with your request. You want another partnership with the brand ask for it. The strategy to correct this mistake is to send that follow-up email to the brand, share your performance analytics, add any feedback that you've received from your audience, any sales that you generated, and then you can even include potential ideas for the future collaboration. Building long-term relationships with brands is key to sustained success. There you have it guys, these are the eight common mistakes that you might be making that are costing you paid brand collaborations and how to fix them. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Also, check the links in my description box for that negotiating guide and for other creator resources. Be sure to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok to keep up with my day-to-day -day life and see all of these tips in action. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.